Facebook goes light, Pinterest launches shopping, and you can unlock devices with your brain. All that and more today on Crunch Week. Hey there, I'm Colleen Taylor. I'm John. And I'm Sarah. Welcome to Crunch Week and welcome what to San Francisco. I'm here in this beautiful empty room of a studio, <laughs> which in New York we have a studio about the size of this table. <laughs> so we're the mic, the cameras are right in front of us, and usually we hide underneath the table. Like, <laughs> right, kinda, right. Like, do it properly. Yeah, we so we have more really space refreshing. out here in California, and this is our new sort of studio setup. We've been borrowing space upstairs, but now but it's not ready. It's, it's not, not ready yet. I feel it's like still... we need more flair, like more like stuff hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, like, we should like like like, like you know how you go to some bars and stuff, and there's yeah. like you know motorcycles hanging from the ceiling, yeah. and like you know, stop signs what on the be, walls. What would be hanging from our ceiling? Like what would be? Just sadness. Like a <laughs> an endless disappointment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like like computers or and something? Like a bunch of computers. Yeah, like old tech. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Amiga. Ataris. We could and... just hang an Amiga right in the anyway. middle. Anyway. We're just what... spitballing design ideas. Yep. But uh, first topic of the week here is, is Facebook uh, launched a new version of its app. It's basically its app, but on diet, Facebook Lite. Oh. Um, sort of. The idea, the idea here is uh, people in the developing world don't have high-speed internet access. They may not have super fast smartphones, but Facebook obviously wants to expand its user base. So it's pared down what it offers to us so that people in the developing world can access and get on Facebook. Right. Yeah. I mean, the primary problem is that Facebook's running out of potential people to give Facebook to. So they want, they want India, they want Africa, they want parts of Russia, they want parts, part, areas of the world where either there's already somebody there, uh, like a Yandex or one of these things, uh, social networks, or they don't have anything, or they, all they have is SMS. So if you have, a, if you have Facebook Lite, that's available for a cheaper smartphone that might run Android or something like that, but isn't an iPhone, and isn't video and text heavy, or video and image heavy, then you're going to actually have a winner there. Yeah, I think that this is something that we've seen from a lot of, of the larger internet companies. In mm -hmm. recent months, we've just been hearing a lot about these kind of products. I think it was a few weeks ago, Matthew Lindley did a whole report on, on some similar products that Google was launching, mm -hmm. sort of slimmed down versions of its most popular applications for the developing world. This seems to be a huge focus mm -hmm. lately. Facebook is a gift for the developing world. <laughs> it is. It is. Clean water. <laughs> Google and then Facebook. Really. I know. I know. We, you could be like cynical about it and think like this is just this corporate thing, and we're like, you know, giving. As long as they Facebook give internet that, access alongside of it, then I'm then I'm happy. I think it's they, wonderful, and I, I got, there, there's a plan, right? Mm -hmm. The balloons. They've got plans to captivate audiences and keep you coming back for more. Right. On the Facebook world. I know. We can see it. We can see it all as being very, you know, like superficial and kind of. Uh, I don't know, but I, but I think it's a good thing to be bringing internet access and social networking. Yeah. You know, social networking has Help been a really cool thing. World. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think overall it's it's pretty cool news. Um, and next story, Pinterest finally launched something that it seems like is probably the most anticipated. It, yeah, thing. it's taken forever. It's taken forever, and it, to me, it's the most one of the most obvious things they could have possibly done to monetize from the beginning. And and it's shoppable pins? Yes, these shoppable pins, you can shop right on Pinterest. You just hit the buy button like we've seen on many websites. It's not a new idea. Um, but it's taken them a long time to get so there. You see a picture of shoes or like yeah. artisanal candles or a dog, and you can just buy the dog. <laughs> send me you this dog. You can buy the dog on Pinterest. Send me this dog. <laughs> send, me this, send me this happy marriage. <laughs> send me this relationship. Send me all the time that these people yes. have to make beautiful wreaths. Right, right. I want the time, and I want holiday. the, I want well, the disposable that, I mean, income. I mean, you on Etsy, too, right? I, mean, I guess right? so, yeah. yeah so you I could guess do... you could sell stuff from Etsy on Pinterest. So are you, you guys, this is getting are, really... are, you a big, are you guys big Pinterest users? I don't, I've I'm not I was, a Pinterest. I was for a while and I, I mean, it didn't have that, I built my pins and my boards and my, I did this whole thing, right? And, and I, I really enjoyed it. And then what happened is actually I would go back there and I would see something really cute that I liked, some outfit, especially for fashion, uh, it was really useful for me or, you know, planning parties or something, getting ideas. And I would click through to figure out where I could buy something, 
and often it was just a pin of something from some blog or website. You couldn't buy it. You mm -hmm. couldn't figure out where to get it. Right. It was so, really frustrating. So it sounds like you kind of dropped off your usage because this product wasn't yeah. available. Do you think that you'll go back now or have you just, have your habits just sort of evolved and Pinterest isn't as much part of your habits anymore? Uh, assuming that there are really cool products on there that I'm interested in, obviously I will go back. If, yeah. you know, if they provide something that I can't find other places, which is what I really liked from the beginning. You saw all these great fashion choices and, and it brought it all together where you'd have to scour all over the web to several different sites to find something like that. But then you know, now with the opportunity to buy it or figure out where to get it, that's, I mean, now, that's... Colleen, you had a theory about why they didn't have it up there I yet. do. I have a little theory about why this took so long for Pinterest to launch something like this. In, in the earlier days, Pinterest was, and it still is in a lot of ways, just this repository for a lot of images, mm -hmm. like you said, that are sort of unattributable, or you kind of mm -hmm. go back and it just ended up being All a screenshot. All my pinboards are just pictures of G.I. Joe guys. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's because I didn't know what to do with it. I just did that. Really? Yeah. What's your Pinterest name? John Biggs or something? I think so. Go look at John Biggs' G.I. Joe John boards. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's all unattributed stuff and, and they had a lot of copyright complaints. I mean, you'd see a lot of things from photographers saying, hey, that's that's my picture on there and I'm not getting credit for this and it's been shared a thousand times and I don't see a dime. You know, they had a real problem with copyright and attribution on the site hmm. and so for a long time, Pinterest didn't make any money and I think that they really couldn't turn on the ability to make money because they still hadn't figured out this attribution copyright situation. I think the second that they turned on the money-making thing mm -hmm. is when people could go after them for I copyright guess, issues. I guess I could see that because I mean, what other sites are like YouTube Pinterest has where, a very similar thing, and, yeah. and YouTube. It took a long time for mm. YouTube, and I, you know, did didn't YouTube just start to become profitable, or maybe they're still kind of just almost breaking so, even yeah. because mm -hmm. daily they're getting these complaints against them. It takes a lot of money and and you know technological power to keep track of these kinds of things mm -hmm. and police these things when it's an open forum like this. Hmm. And so I think that they've been working so much on that. And, right, and this it other seems like stuff such later. an obvious thing to do. Exactly, and there yeah. have been other startups that have launched in recent years mm -hmm. that are basically like Pinterest, except for that you can shop on them. There's like Juanilo and Polyvore, mm -hmm. and I wonder how this launch is going to affect them. I'd imagine that this past week was probably, you know, sort of a moment of truth for, mm -hmm. for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens to the ecosystem. Right. Yeah. Well, speaking of brain ecosystems. I can see a segue. I know, on. I did that again. Generally, University of Binghamton up in New York, they have, a, uh, they have a system now that allows you to unlock your computer with your brain. It's called brain prints. OK, tell me, how does this happen? So you see a bunch of words on the screen. And it's like FBI, dog, horse, whatever else. And all the things that you think about when, those, when you see those words are basically read and understood as sort of a key. So later on, when it shows you FBI dog horse, you think the same things, and that brain pattern unlocks your computer. So is this something that you could, I, and this isn't a product yet, right? It's this not is a just product. a And it research. has 94% accuracy, so you could feasibly think the wrong thing and it just won't open. Okay. What if, I mean, so this is unique to you. Mm -hmm. no, no two people are thinking dog, police, horse yep. the same way. They yep. don't, you, we all see, we all think about it a different way. And, we, and it's not, we're not thinking about the concepts, we're just thinking about the, what the, the brain waves, like the mm -hmm. brain, brain patterns. You're not, brain, you're not actually okay. reading, you're not actually reading. It's like a like, fingerprint. Yeah. It's exactly when I right. think about horse, I could be thinking of like happy times yeah, in and my childhood and someone some else could be thinking about racing off. and some, someone else could mm -hmm. be thinking about a totally different thing. Question. You're saying that each word has a different firing in your brain. Mm -hmm. That's how it unlocks it. What happens when, if you start associating that word differently in your brain? Well, that lets you change that password. Okay. So if you want to get rid of the word horse in the password list or whatever, in the mm -hmm. possibilities list, you basically stop thinking about horse in the way that you used to think about it. You have to change the way you think about the horse. Okay. It's pretty freaky. It is pretty freaky. Do, hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see it in practice. But I have to say, it sounds kind of scary. And especially being that the first word that you used was FBI. <laughs> well, for some it's reason, like enough for people are already conspiracy I guess, theorists. I guess they wanted, they wanted uh, words with like an emotional charge. Like a strong thing. But obviously this isn't for like you opening up your Pinterest account. This is for like completely secure systems that you need, that you would do a fingerprint, then you would do a... a voice print analysis, then you would do brain analysis. Okay. Ultimately to really is get there, through. Is there a weird weird thought here? 
The, um, is there a way that they could possibly start tracking how people are starting to think about things and gather data on people? Potentially, but then that would be really creepy. Yeah, that's really creepy. Yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't put it past anybody. Maybe Facebook Lite is that's maybe that's what Facebook Lite does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows what the future will bring? But we do know that next week brings WWDC, mm -hmm. so there will be a lot of Apple news next week, mm -hmm. and that is probably stuff that we'll be talking about here on Crunch Week. Um, until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.